Hello, everyone. Okay, uh, let's start with a question. Who's been hacked before? Oh, lots of you. Um, I was, you're recharged uh, after the break. I was assuming people might be shy, but lots of hands raised for those that didn't see. Um, I've been hacked. Uh, first time was in college when I was the victim of identity theft. And then later, uh, a web application that I wrote got hacked. Uh, one day I realized it was running a bit slow and I looked closer and it was serving Viagra ads. And that wasn't how I designed it. Uh, and so I got my first experience doing incident response. And it was the result of a bug that I had written in my application unintentionally. Um, but after that, I joined a hacking club to learn more about how to hack and also how to prevent uh, getting hacked. And I joined Google 15 years ago as a hired hacker and helped a lot of different Google teams find security bugs, fix security bugs, and, and mitigate them. And then I moved to Chrome about 10 years ago to lead Chrome's security team. Uh, and today I'm responsible for uh, all of Google Chrome. I'm incredibly proud to work on a pretty popular consumer and enterprise product and also one of the most successful open source projects called Chromium, that's what Chrome is based on, uh, and many other browser products are based on Chromium, uh, as well as other uh, technologies um, that really uh, power Chrome and other parts of the internet, as well as probably a lot of the businesses that are represented here. Also, some of those hackers that I worked with in college uh, or have met along the way are now chief security officers and leaders in national cybersecurity initiatives. Um, I know we have many distinguished leaders uh, and representatives in the C-suite in this room, and so maybe there's some hackers um, amongst us here as well. So cybersecurity, it's become a pretty mainstream topic, both in the consumer and enterprise security space. And today I wanna talk about just a couple of the ways we tackle it at Google um, as well as, as together more broadly um, as one player in the ecosystem. So why has this become such a mainstream topic? First, at a really high level, there's just been an evolution in the sophistication of both attacks as well as our defenses. Now, we've seen cybersecurity incidents in Europe increase by more than 10x just over the past four years. And on average, a company will fall victim to a ransomware attack every 11 seconds. Now, not all ransomware attacks are massive incidents, but in total, last year in 2021, we estimated that the global cost of uh, ransomware attacks was $20 billion. Now, major incidents can take weeks or months to fully recover from and have tremendous impact on civil society. A recent example that was local was a cyber attack on the European Medicines Agency, and sensitive data was leaked and manipulated to undermine trust in vaccines. And that's just one of many. You know, we've seen cyber attacks threaten to put individuals' uh, data at risk, um, as well as risk national security. Um, disruption of countries, access to the energy grid and telecommunication networks, um, and really, as we've seen play out, undermine trust in democratic processes and civil society. So that's sobering, uh, but it's not all bad news, and our cybersecurity defenses and technologies have advanced quite a lot over the past 10 years as well. So 10 years ago, it wasn't uncommon to be unlucky, open up the wrong website, and have your computer completely compromised. Thanks to technologies like process sandboxing in the browser and automatic security updates, both of these technologies spearheaded by Chrome, software has more built in defense in depth and is constantly getting improved, where software can now have security bugs patched every week. A year ago, it would maybe be one major update a year, and then during the, the change in time, you're kind of on your own. And so you have this more built-in, stronger software immune system in most modern software. 
Now also a decade ago, there was uh, quite a bit of animosity between the hacker or security research community and large software vendors. And today we're, we're seeing much broader support for engaging with security researchers in a constructive way to find and fix vulnerabilities. And part of that is just the recognition that a lot of hackers are motivated to improve security of systems. That's just one example. Uh, we launched Chrome's vulnerability reward program in 2010. And at the time, that was actually really controversial to pay hackers for their bugs. But we recognize the value in working with the community. And since then, we've expanded these reward programs to cover other Google uh, consumer and enterprise products, Android Play, Cloud. Um, and today, these reward programs are considered, in many ways, industry best practice. Other companies have adopted them, as well as government agencies. Um, and you know, just to, to put some, some data to the program, last year, our vulnerability reward program set some new records. We rewarded 696 researchers from 62 countries. Hacking is a global sport. Um, and that represents over 500 unique security bugs. We paid out $8.7 million in rewards. And one of the cool things that um, I've seen with these programs is, is getting to know other hackers, some of whom choose to actually donate their reward to charity. And then Google will double the amount. And so last year, we also, um, as a result of, of these security bugs, not only fixed software, but donated $300,000 to charity. Um, and, uh, you know, this not only fixes Google's products, but also a lot of open source projects in the internet at large. Okay, we talked a little bit about how cybersecurity has, has evolved. IT and the role of IT in security teams has evolved quite a lot too, especially over the past few years. You know, IT teams used to sort of be behind the scenes and you know, surface from the basement if something needed to be fixed and then sort of, you know, uh, left to their own, out of sight, out of mind. But today, they're really at the forefront of of digital work transformation. And, you know, organizations have had to pivot to ensure that their workforces can work from anywhere. And that talent to really figuring this out um, has, has uh, just risen in terms of a company's, a business's uh, advantage. And we're seeing a huge demand for cybersecurity and enterprise security talent and the need for that expertise at all levels of leadership in the C-suite and in the boardroom, which really, I think, underlines it's important to businesses. Additionally, we're seeing more organizations move to the cloud, and with that, an increasing uh, number of workers who are just spending a majority of their time in a browser to get work done. And that's a paradigm shift. You know, when I started working I had a, a native email and calendar application, and collaboration meant you had to be in the same physical space with somebody else, uh, or you should expect to send around attachments with really funky, um, you know, uh, suffixes like underscore final version underscore with edits underscore time stamp underscore final 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 for real. Um, uh, and today, we have much more real-time, powerful collaboration and connection, a lot of which happens on the web. Um, and in applications that are actually safer and faster and more usable in terms of actually collaborating with multiple people in different locations. And that paradigm shift really makes the browser an increasingly important part of an organization's security and productivity strategy. Um, so with that context, I want to share just a couple of examples of how we practically uh, improve security, understand the hacker mindset, um, and help protect both our users as well as um, uh, those above and beyond that are using the web. So first, to advance defenses, you have to think like a hacker, think like an attacker. And so um, I, I lead a team called Project Zero. Uh, they focus on attacks that exploit vulnerabilities that defenders don't know about yet. Uh, these are also known as zero days. And this team has found hundreds of zero days vulnerabilities, both in Google software as well as non-Google software. Um, including operating systems uh, that I'm sure you all know and, and love and run, uh, open source libraries, antivirus, password managers, firmware, hardware, and, and more. And they publish their research so that other defenders can understand and benefit it. They advise on fixes, and importantly, they help us build more advanced exploit mitigation technology. 
built in Chrome as well as other products. And um, if that sounds interesting, you wanna hear more about it, we actually just launched a, a six part docu-series called Hacking Google um, for Cybersecurity Awareness Month. Uh, and in this series, we share a little bit more information about um, how we look at the internet through the eyes of a hacker. We try to break it and then we fix it. Um, and you can check it out, it's on YouTube um, or, or that link. Another initiative I'm incredibly proud of is called Project Shield. So with the ongoing war in Ukraine, we've observed a huge surge in cyber attacks against websites that are providing critical information to citizens like current news and evacuation resources. And to help, we expanded our free defense program. And we now defend more than 200 Ukrainian websites, including those that belong to the government news and human rights groups. And the way Project Shield works is it allows Google, we have a lot of computers, uh, to absorb bad traffic that is stemming from denial of service attacks and really act as a shield for smaller sites. And Project Shield protects independent news and human rights and election monitoring sites uh, in other countries in Europe, North America and Africa. And we encourage all eligible organizations to register for Project Shield so that our computers and our systems can just help to block these attacks uh, and keep websites online. And then finally, we automatically protect over 5 billion devices and probably more people online than anyone else by blocking malware, phishing attempts, spam messages, and cyber attacks via what's called Google's safe browsing technology. In the last few years, we've seen phishing attacks rise substantially, and so we're constantly trying to understand those techniques and improve how we detect those phishing attacks in a fairly dynamic environment. And the safe browsing technology is built directly into Chrome and intercepts attempts before uh, you as a user ever actually, uh, they ever actually reach you. And we also make this available uh, via API so other browsers and other services can integrate um, this protection as well. Of course, we're just one player in a, a large ecosystem and it's important we're coming together to keep users and customers and enterprises safe. We work closely with academia and publish research where we can. Uh, we work with public institutions to engage on policy discussions and standards discussions, and then we hold customer advisory boards because um, our customers keep us honest about what we're doing well and where we still need to do some work. Um, recently had one in London and actually in November we have one focused on security because that's so top of mind for uh, a lot of executives. Um, and we partner with awesome security companies like Splunk and Palo Alto Networks and CrowdStrike to really try to solve some of the biggest challenges that we're all seeing and all face and believe that joining forces is the only way we're going to be able to tackle some of these threats uh, that we are ex you know, facing today, as well as how can we predict what we'll face in the future. Now, when you have companies working together and, and uh, organizations working together, we know that it's critical that the technologies we're building really work together seamlessly um, so that people at the end of the day, aren't victims to kind of the rough edges of security. And many IT leaders that I talk to, you know, find managing this trade-off of security and usability really challenging, and I, I completely get it. Um, you know, within Chrome, we're always balancing security, performance, usability, and we're not willing to compromise on any of them. And so how do you balance that trade-off space? I've worked in environments or advised environments where you know, security controls hampered productivity, and then you ended up actually having a more insecure outcome. So, for example, at a government agency, they said no email attachments, that's how malware is spread. But the result was that employees started using their personal Gmail and Dropbox accounts to then handle and share sensitive data. And so you had, you know, a, a less secure outcome. Um, now, the internet, uh, contains a treasure trove of security fail pictures. Um, this is one of my favorites, and it was, it was taken in Germany. Um, and I think just underscores the reality that if security isn't really integrated into common workflows, um, people will look around them. Um, you know, a CSO at a Fortune 500 company 
in France told us it's just not feasible to fully restrict the user experience of the browser when it comes to improving security, and they're exactly right. And so when we're building security solutions into the browser, when we're working with other companies, we're working with human computer interaction experts, we're working with human psychologists to understand how people will use our tech or potentially misuse uh, our technology because it's such a critical part of getting security right. So all of that, it's probably no surprise that we think the browser is foundation of security. And if Chrome's your browser, um, know that it's backed by world-class security talent, some of whom I've mentioned, lots, lots more who work behind the scenes to help keep people safe. And I'll just leave with, with a, a call to action for the room that's twofold. One, let's keep working together because I really do believe that we're increasingly connected and advancing security is a cross-functional, cross-organization, cross-border uh, endeavor. And second, I encourage business leaders to really tackle cybersecurity head-on and intentionally. So always make sure that security is a key factor in how you're assessing or reassessing you know, the technology stacks you're building your business on. Um, invest in browser and device management it's a simple thing that I actually see most organizations not doing. Um, if you don't know what you have, you can't secure it. Um, and last, take steps to work towards a zero trust security model. This is something that Google has been uh, approaching for security for a long time now, and we have a solution called Beyond Corp Enterprise that can help, but at a high level, you know, you're really wanting to bring in uh, more um, you know, integrated security solutions, whether it's phishing and malware attacks or data leak and loss prevention directly into your stack versus kind of having a more antiquated perimeter. Um, if you've already done that, I can always give more tips. Um, but I'll end by just saying that I f see few greater missions than helping people and businesses stay safe as the world increasingly depends on technology. And I know that it takes collaboration from many. Uh, this is where uh, me and my team spend a lot of time on um, focusing on building helpful products that keep users safe, whether at work or at home or on the go. And I'll just end with a video that my team put together, uh, which is one more way that we're trying to help people um, navigate the web in a slightly more safe and uh, enjoyable way. Uh, oh, June bug. Capital C, exclamation point. Incorrect password. Come on, come on, come on. Think about it, think about it, think about it. Come on, come on. Of course I tried that. Exclamation mark, question mark. That's three. This is ridiculous, man. Is it a capital G or lowercase g? Lowercase h o t, capital G. U Y 1978, at sign. No, 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 por favor, no. Just give me a moment, come on. What is it? Yes. Thank you, Parissa. It's amazing you managed to get both of my parents into your video. <laughs> um,